It's January 2013, and all roads lead to beautiful Cape Town for book one of the third Cape Premier Yearling Sale. At the Cape Sale, it's a lifestyle more than just a sale, and buyers are well catered for in the lead-up with the best hospitality, events and racing South Africa has to offer. Cape Town's a fantastic city. I've been coming here for about 15 years now, um, and when the sale was first incepted, you know, three or four years ago, before the first one in 2010, I thought it was going to be a great idea, personally. In South Africa down here, it's unique. You've got the climate, you've got the environment, and you got the will willingness of the people to, to give you a good time. And it's, it's just the venue is fantastic. Great vineyards, great restaurants, um, a wonderful city to travel to from anywhere in the world at this time of year. Back home it's minus five, here it's 25 degrees. Um, and it's just a great place to come at this time of year. It's a great place to visit and you know, all of the fun stuff that goes on. Business is the reason we're here, but it's, it's always nice to come and do business at a place where the people want to see you and just makes it a place, even if you mightn't have a big budget, that you want to come and have a look. As in previous years, festivities kicked off with the Drakenstein Stud Yearling Parade at the incredibly beautiful property of the Rupert family. Despite the windy conditions, guests were treated to outstanding hospitality and an impressive draft of yearlings with an incredible panoramic backdrop of stunning scenery, while resident stallion Trippy continues to give breeders and owners a lot to look forward to. You can see a Trippy come out and walk a mile off. What's represented here, you know, they look like him. He's an athlete of a horse. The Clava Flake Golf Day has become a very popular event leading into the sale for both buyers, sellers and trainers who enjoy the opportunity to relax and enjoy one of the Cape's premier golf courses. This year, Main Chance Stud hosted a cocktail party at their prestigious winery, spoiling guests with amazing food and some of the finest wines the Cape region has to offer. Well, we want to show them the beauty of the country, so we bring them to a wonderful vineyard here and serve them excellent food and wine. I hope they liked it. Uh, I liked it very much. As word spread on the success and quality of last year's sale, buyers both locally and from around the world descended on the Cape Town Convention Center in search of their next champion, with vendors confident they had the drafts to fit the bill. Yes, well, well represented by VAR and um, obviously two fillies from the last crop of Jetmaster and then, you know, the new guys, Argonaut and Seventh Rock, so a cross-section for everybody. Some super horses uh, this year. We had a very good year last year. We bred two out of the three Group 1 winners off this, the inaugural sale. And yes, we've got some lovely horses here this year. We picked, uh, I think, a nice group of colts. I think the colts are outstanding, um, much better than the years before. Uh, so I'm very proud. I think the, the guys did a very, very good job. We're up here in the, in the valley. Um, I think it's a, it's a very good place to breed. I think the horses do very well up here in the valley. JPEGs come out of here. I think we've shown that we can breed horses here. We've got some of the top stallions here. We've got our champion and resident stallion, Captain L, well featured, and a couple of first season sires as well. But all in all, pretty exciting for us. We've got a Jetmaster colt out of the mare La Deportista, a great race mare, sports world mare. He's one of the few last Jetmasters on sale, so we're looking forward to something good. Then a Captain L and a dynasty. So we're looking forward to a good sale. The decisions are made now. Vars a serious horse. They sprint, they stay, they get the classic mile, fillies, colts. So I would assume you'd be, have a great sale and we've got some very nice individuals, yeah. I think it's a more focused uh, catalogue and certainly uh, talking to many of the, of the buyers, um, a stronger catalogue than last year. A new look catalogue awaited buyers with slightly reduced numbers and an emphasis on quality. And if their reactions were any indication, this year's Cape sale was on track to scale new heights. 
Every year they've gotten a little better. The bottom has been culled off every year. So you got to have good horses to go anywhere. Um, and they are good here. I think it's very strong. The breeders have learned how to select their horses for the sale. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's come along. The third year they're doing it. Um, it's already produced uh, outstanding horses internationally. This horse is off falling rain that went in Dubai the other day. I'm, I'm sure there's more of that sort of horse here. There's a very strong string of horses this year as it was last year. We bought quite a few horses and for a lot of new clients that are overseas based and uh, some have already come out and have done extremely well. Uh, looking forward to what's coming up at the sales. Uh, we've got some interesting new buyers uh, and uh, as I said, just looking for a great week and hopefully purchasing some top horses. The horses that I've seen at the sale, um, some lovely pedigree, some true good quality horses and uh, yeah, I'm quite excited about, uh, about the sale. I think it's a, it's a buyer's market in South Africa without a doubt. Um, I think we've proven our horses are, are good enough to go anywhere in the world. So, you know, it's, it's a great place to shop. Yeah, I'm impressed. Um, I think that um, for a sale that comes relatively early in the year for when these horses are produced, some of them are a lot more together than usual, you know. Some of them are going to need more time than others and, and some of them are a little bit more precocious. But in my humble opinion, from what I've seen, there's something for everybody. The last couple of years, the, the horses have been turned out well and they, they've... Uh, They've, they, they found it quite easy to, to, to get them ready and uh, they look good at the sale and uh, I'm, I'm happy to go there and, and, and buy. I've been around to the farms and uh, had a look at them. A lot of nice horses, are generally an even crop. Very nice draft, uh, obviously very good pedigrees. Um, it's a little bit young but obviously uh, that's a chance you take. As far as pedigrees go, they uh, match up anywhere in the world. We produce a very good product. I know that we produce a product that can hold its own abroad. Every year there's one or two that come out here that can win international group ones. There's some quality horses here. Um, like any sale, there's the top lots and the bottom lots and they sort of pick themselves out. But if you compare to the rest of the world, the top lots are really good value. And at the end of the day, you want to buy a nice horse at a good price. There were also several new season sires represented who made a big impression on some of the good judges. I think five or six new sires here and um, you know you must always give new sires a good chance because they're that's the future. The new kid on the block, uh, Seventh Rock, he's thrown some lovely horses. He throws nice fillies, nice colts, he stamps them with authority, they, they all look like him and yeah, the pedigree speak for itself. And uh, Seventh Rock, certainly a revelation for us, he's, he's a son of a Rock of Gibraltar, he's out of the uh, very fast mare Ruby Clipper and uh, very exciting for the farm. We've got some magical comments. Pat Shaw seeing them now. This is probably the highlight of our draft with some of the seventh rocks. He produces a really nice horse for me. I think some of his horses here are really nice for early horses as well. So I think for, for him for a start, they'd have to be pretty happy with him. As Thursday night's opening session drew closer, the finishing touches were applied to both the horses and the venue, and all was in readiness. This year had attracted a number of return visitors, no doubt impressed by what they'd seen last year, as well as an unprecedented number of local and new international buyers. Some of the world's leading bloodstock agents were on hand, including Tom Goff, Grant Pritchard Gordon and Peter Doyle from Europe, as well as the USA's Kip Elsa and Angus Gold was again in attendance to represent Shadwell Stud. Regular visitor and leading UK trainer William Haggis was joined in Cape Town for the first time by international Group 1 winning trainer Ed Dunlop, while Patrick Shaw returned from Singapore along with international conditioner Mike DeCock. By the time travelling auctioneer John O'Kelly got proceedings underway with the well-named cult Brutal Force by Western Winter from the Lammaskral stud draft, a strong precedent was set for the night, with bidding reaching 300,000 rand before the horse had even entered the ring. That, that was actually funny for about uh, 45 seconds, because the auctioneer was uh, going on about the horse as if he was seeing the horse, and I was uh, bewildered. After some spirited bidding, he was eventually knocked down to the bid of 1.5 million rand to Mayfair speculators. Mark 
Houston. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Been in play with the very best of them too. Gorgeous coast. Well done to Lawrence Shaw as well. Right, that's hopefully set the tone of the night, ladies and gentlemen. The first year with Shaw. Trading was frantic early on night one, with UK visitors Badgers Bloodstock and Blandford Bloodstock active early, purchasing lots five and six respectively. But it didn't take long for the first record of the night to tumble, with a spirited bidding duel on lot nine for the son of Dynasty from the Highlands draft. Uh, the half-brother to the south topper last year, the Jetmaster Colt, a uh, lovely, lovely classic type horse, not going to be an early horse, and Joe yeah, had a lot of interest in him. With the final bid going to Form Bloodstock and Dean Kanamea for a cool 3 million rand. Kanamea had developed a reputation as a stallion maker, and we may well see this Colt's progeny appearing in future Cape sales. If you look at horses uh, that are standing stallions now, for example, Dynasty, who was probably one of the best horses this country seen in many, many years. I mean, he, he won every classic race in this country. He was now one of the leading sires in South Africa. Um, he's producing champions in his first uh, season, uh, his first crop, and, he, and he's upgraded his mares. Uh, so um, that's been a, a great boost and great boost to my business too. Only two lots later, and the local outfit of Form Bloodstock struck again, paying 2.7 million rand and setting another new record in the process, this time for a cracking, trippy filly. With such a strong local and international buying bench in attendance, buyers were finding it tough, while vendors were encouraged by the strength of the early going. It didn't take long for Ed Dunlop to take a liking to South African bred yearlings, opening his account with Lot 21 by imported stallion Antonius Pius, then following up a short time later with Lot 32 by Western Winter, both purchased for a syndicate of European owners to race in South Africa. In between, we saw the sales record smashed when Adrian van Furen beat all comers to secure Lot 27, the cracking colt by Silvano from the main chance draft. That's an interesting mating. It has been successful before. Uh, full Sister has been very promising, then became a bit calm in Durban. But I think I had a huge uh, ability, and that's why I think this boy uh, is right looking right like her. So I think he's, he's going to be a very, very good racehorse. Spirited bidding continued to drive the night's averages up as strong trading continued to assure a high clearance rate. Freshman sire Seventh Rock was making a big impression with buyers and leading the way for the first season sires with several lots topping 400,000 Rand and lot 74 the standout going to 700k. The leading sires continue to deliver the goods with Trippy, Dynasty and Western Winter Progeny all delivering 1 million plus Rand results late on day one. But it was lot 115 the daughter of Dynasty, out of the Australian mare, a star for Maria, that created a spirited bidding duel before being knocked down to Tom Goff of Blandford Bloodstock on behalf of Coolmore Stud. That 115, um, it's a first fall. As you saw, she's well grown for a first fall. I think that mare has lots of quality in her. She's a Nové mare, and the pedigree, the, her second dam, Bannock, um, Moulin Lady, they all are running still and as one listed grade one winners. Then, to cap off what turned out to be a record-breaking night, the last lot through the ring by Dynasty from the Daytona stud draft sold for 1.4 million. When the curtain came down on the first session, nobody could have imagined what had transpired at the Cape Town Convention Center that night. 
But it was it was fantastic. There was wonderful. There was a smaller catalogue, but a wonderful bunch of horses. I think they were very very well appreciated by the buyers. And we can only we sing our song and do the best we can. But it's down to the buyers wanting the horses. And we had some lovely lovely horses there too. Everybody, I think there'll be a lot of police people. It's just been a very enthusiastic sale and the buyers have played in a wonderful venue. Congratulations to the Cape Thoroughbred sales. The spread of buyers this year is the best we've had. Uh, and that's encouraging, not just for, for this sale, but I think for the industry in, in South Africa. And many of the, of the overseas buyers uh, arrived here on their own steam, which is very encouraging. And uh, so, yeah, we're very pleased. That's, that's an aim of the sales company, to attract money from abroad. And I, I think it's, it's got to be applauded. It's fantastic. An average of 511k for session one, up from 406k last year, delivering a 25% increase on last year. All the records tumbled, with the highest price ever of 3.25 million paid by relative newcomer Adrian van Furen for the Silvana Colt from Main Chance to go to the Mike Azzi Yard. Another record top price for a filly of 2.7 million for the trippy filly out of Fort Wood, consigned by Claverflay, further enhancing the quality of the horses catalogued. Total turnover for the session exceeded 51 million rand to set up an exciting second session to the delight of Cape Premier Chairman Chris van Niekerk. I spoke with uh, Dr. Andreas uh, Jacobs, a man who's been you know, over at sales worldwide, and he said he has never seen a sale start that strongly anywhere that he's been. Nine lots topping the million rand mark and bookends of one million plus for the first and last lots of the session made for very happy vendors. Highlands averaged uh, at a million, just over a million. And I think that could be another record for, for, for South Africa. Uh, so uh, those I've spoken, uh, spoken with, they, they are very happy and, and hoping for the same to continue tonight. Dynasty and Silvano led the way for the sires, while Highlands and Main Chance were the leading vendors. The Silvanos this year are probably the best we've seen in terms of confirmation and, and so forth, so there's no surprise. Session two kicked off with great anticipation for sellers on the back of the record-breaking Thursday night and didn't disappoint with solid trade. There was great interest in lot 136 by leading US sire Tappet and the only one of its kind in South Africa. Here is the only one on the sale. I am Tappet. All right, so what have we been here? Let's take it away. Here's going to be me on this one. I'm going to Tappet is considered by some to be one of the hottest sires on the planet at the moment, having already sired 10 Group 1 winners that include four Breeders' Cup winners in only his first four crops. U.S. agent Kip Elsa knew good value when he saw it and snapped up the filly for what seemed to be incredibly great value at 700k. Well, I, I'm a fan. I hope, I hope I can convince a few other people to. As the second day continued to gain momentum, local buyers were happy to joust with the extensive international buying bench from all over Europe, the USA, and as far afield as Australia. The million rand plus lots continued with lot 147, the gorgeous filly by Captain Al out of Cupid, going to Greg Bortz for 1.7 million. Not wanting to be left out, John Freeman entered the fray some three lots later to outlay 2 million for lot 150, a striking colt by Dynasty out of the main chance draft, further enhancing the strength of the buying bench. The three hot shots at the moment are in alphabetical order: Captain L, Dynasty, and Trippy. Um, Dynasty is bound to be the next champion sire. You buy a horse here. If it turns out to be any good, you can deliver a very, very uh, world-class competitive horse at very little money. Angus Gold was actor for Shadwell Stud, picking up several loving yearlings while Ed Dunlop chimed in to buy his fifth lot, this time lot 175 by Seventh Rock for a healthy 625K. More million rand plus sales in the form of lots 179 by Trippy and 197 knocked down to Rainbow Beach Trading, plus lot 194 by Jetmaster to John Freeman and lot 208 to Mike Bass ensured a record aggregate. And a million and fifty, here we go. And a million and fifty, once, twice, then the last time, selling for one million and fifty thousand. Mike Getz, congratulations, one million and fifty. 
you know, we've got some good breeding grounds around here. Um, I was involved in breeding myself before training, and uh, the areas, uh, the ground is very, very good around here, Robertson, those places, series. Um, terrific ground, terrific soils for, for breeding. They breed tough horses. Angus Gold outlaid one million rand each for lots 230 and 232. A Colton filly by leading sire VAR late in proceedings, taking the number of million plus sales to 19. When the hammer came down to end day two, the sale had produced an aggregate of 98,335,000 rand. Leading sire by aggregate was the Drakenstein stud based Trippy with 24 yearlings, selling for over 15 million rand, while the top sire by average was the late Jetmaster. South Africa's greatest homebred sire sold seven lots at an average of nearly 840,000 rand. After producing the recent Group 1 success of the likes of Soft Falling Rain, Warhorse, and The Hangman, buyers increased this year's overall sale average by 20% to just under 485,000 rand. I think that the, the breeders have got the formula right in the sense that they, what they've done is they've bought the, more, the, the physical horse uh, rather than the paperwork. I'd say hugely positive, hugely positive about the venue again. Uh, and the weather, but equally the quality of the horses on offer. I think it's all very, very exciting times. And obviously there's a huge investment behind the group and clearly, I would say, it's, I'd like to think it's paying dividends. South African breeding and racing, I think is the best kept secret. Our horses have gone out, they've flown our flag high, they've competed with the best in the world and yet they've never let us down. The, you know, the, the horses are really nice and, and, and I'm, I'm sure over the years you can see, even though we've, we've exported very few horses, the results have been really good. So, I, you know, I would say that our best horses are, are sort of, will hold their own anywhere in the world. When you come to South Africa, you're buying good quality horses that have proven themselves internationally. If you go and see what's happened in Dubai and, and, and also in the East, in Hong Kong and Singapore and even in America, uh, you look at Michael Lecoq's operation in Dubai, um, South African horses have performed very well. You know, apart from being a, 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 a good tourist destination, uh, I think as far as things like breeding and, um, and as far as the industry goes, uh, we've got a lot to offer the world. I know I've got my South African cap on at the moment, but having been there and done it, I know that we can hold our own anywhere in the world. So, as the curtain comes down on what can only be described as one of the most exciting sales in South African history, all focus now shifts to a stronger and more compact book two to be held at the Durbanville Racetrack on the 23rd and 24th of March with the pending announcement of an unprecedented rich new race series to be unveiled by Cape Thoroughbred Sales. We've had a panel to sit and, and look at the horses and I've spoken to some of them and I think we are going to put together a stronger book two than we've had last year, no doubt in my mind. On top of that, and although we can't talk to detail yet, we are planning some exciting bonus racing coming for the horses bought at book two, which we will announce in due course. So we are going to create some excitement for the buyers.
This has been a Thorough Media production.